we can't beat the worst teams and we lose to the best teams, so what does that make us? All right, Seattle Sounders, nil. Austin FC, nil. Jack, new season. You were here in the last home, the last game last season, and it's the same thing. Same team, same team as the last game last season. Um, I think the only thing that I can say is I, I pray that Pedro de la Vega isn't actually injured and that this was just like a minutes restriction from Brian Schmetzer because if Pedro de la Vega gets injured, we will be the worst team in the West. I, I like we I have, mean, we already are we in the bottom are. half. Yeah, I, but I mean, we can't we can't beat the worst teams and we lose to the best teams. So what does that make us? I don't know. That's an interesting <laughs> right? question. I mean, like we can put we can have 20 shots on goal. We, the, we can limit the other team to one for the entire game. We can have the other team commit 17, 18, 19 fouls. We can, we can win 10 corners in a game. And if we can't put the ball in the back of the net, I mean. Because that's, that's how you win that's games it, yeah. is scoring goals. That's the reality. And we just can't do that. Overall, I mean, what was your thoughts on this game? I think most people thought on paper this was the game Seattle had. Like, we will give them LAFC, even though I felt at some point we have to finally win in L.A., but most fans would be like, okay, you know, it's LAFC at their home. That's okay. But Austin at home, who are on paper arguably going to be one of the worst teams in the Western Conference, and when you look at their team on paper, they don't look good. Really bad. Yeah. What was your thoughts? Um, I terrible. I mean, it's just it's, it's a terrible game. I think we played we played the exact same game as we did against LAFC. The only difference is that uh, Jordan Morris won a penalty. I mean, we've only scored one goal all season, and that was a penalty kick. That was one. I mean, it was just, it's, this is not sustainable. This is not sustainable. This is not sustainable football for a franchise to play. This is not winning football. We will not win soccer games like this. It, it's interesting. Someone brought up this point. The Seattle Sounders are such a good team, but they spend money and make transfers like a relegation team. I yeah. just I thought that was interesting because I feel like that's what you're alluding to. That's, and, and that's, well, that was my next point is like we are one piece away from being one of the best teams in MLS. We are one player away. We need one final. We need a number nine and that's it. If we get a number nine, even even if we can get Raul Ruiz Diaz to score like 10 goals this season, which is in, like practically impossible but like but like we just we just we need we are one player we are one player away from being so good so so good and, and what we, i'm hearing is it's a striker it's a striker it's a striker it's a number nine and if we don't if we don't have a number nine that can competently score goals not we don't even need him whoever he may be to be a 20 goal scorer we don't need him to win the golden boot all he needs to do is score like eight goals in a season and that just opens up everybody else so much more it opens up the field because right now it's just it's the same as it was same as it was for all of the second half of last season we're just crossing balls in that get pitched out we have meaningless to, possession yeah, meaningless possession in the back it's just it's nothing and it, it looks like we're all we're doing is we're waiting for the other team to score and that is because that's how i felt tonight yeah. with austin if austin actually had a good chance i think we could have lost this game but oh, the fact easy. they just sat back they're like we know we're not gonna we're, we're playing here for the draw if we get a goal you know what cool but yeah. if but we know we're coming here to just sit back, frustrate Seattle, get a draw. That's good enough because they, Austin have only beaten us once in in their history, yeah. one time. Yeah, I, I mean, there's just there's just there's nothing there's nothing more that can be said. I mean, this is a game that, for all intents and purposes, we have to win. Uh, if we don't, if we again, if we can't beat the worst teams and we lose against the contenders, what does that make us? It makes us bottom feeders. Who do you, who do you? Who would you point the fingers to in tonight's game? Uh, I mean, I really like the the thing that's most frustrating is that I don't think that there's one player that we can point fingers to. Um, you know, I'm here like I hear a lot that uh, like a lot of people I think are pointing fingers at Leo Chu. And I think that there is like, you know, I, I think I, I think that he's been playing very well in at, at some points. And I feel like he's definitely been making mistakes as well. But I think at the end of the day, it's like, you know, just replacing Leo Chu with somebody who's like a little bit better, that's not going to like start winning us games, right? If Leo Chu makes fewer mistakes, that's not going to win us more games, you know? There's nobody on the field who I think we can really point to and say like, this person is at fault. This, If we change this player, if, we, if this person does better, like we will win the game. And I think when you get to that point, the fingers have to start getting, start getting pointed at Schmetzer, at the front office. I mean, it's like we're... 
the players are the players are giving everything they can. If you're persisting with the same team and you're you're thinking this team's a team that can win games and that's the team that you're wanting to put out in the season, then you're gonna have to point at Brian, the coach, who's like, "Well, you, we gave you the players. You said you're cool with these players, yeah. but you're not. We're not winning games." Yeah. I mean, if, if the coach is telling us that this is a team that will win championships and we can't beat the worst teams in the league, then, you know, it's I think it's pretty clear who the fault, who the, who the, who the blame lies, you know, the, who the, the blame relies on. You know, it's it's uh, it's exhausting. <laughs> it's really, really is exhausting. Um, yeah. You know, last season I was really in favor of letting Schmetzer try and sort it out with the roster that we have. I think we did. I mean, I think we did bring in talent. I think Pedro de la Vega. I think, looks I think the signings were good. Amazing. It's just not yeah. enough of them, in my opinion. I think it's not. In, I think it's not enough signings. And I think that part of that is Schmetzer thinking that we are a good enough team to win games where we're at. And so now we're sitting on our hands and we're not being proactive. And now we're. I mean, we're. We are looking at the results of that right now. I mean, we, we are seeing what happens when the Sounders sit on their hands and think that they are a good enough team to win, to, to beat these new, like the new age MLS teams. We are not. We are not a good enough team to win championships. We are not a good enough team to beat the teams that we need to pace. Seattle Sounders nil, Austin FC nil. Colin, you were here last time at the last game last season. We're at the home opener. What was your thoughts on tonight's match? Um, yeah, uh, again, just finishing issues. Um, I mean, we had 21 shots, but only three on target. <laughs> three on target is it, that is like, it's almost impressive how bad that is. Like, how do we not have a player for a team of our caliber that can't finish the damn ball? Jordan Morris is a fat, <laughs> slow fraud that can't finish the ball. Okay, he might be a Seattle resident. Oh, he's homeboy Jordan Morris. Okay, great. He can't finish the damn ball for shit. Yeah. Okay, Rui Diaz. Okay, one chance. Could have hit it better. Okay, I mean, look, he comes in, he does what he can. Yeah. But after De La Vega came off, after Chu came off, there's no creativity yeah. in the attack. I think defensively we looked good. I mean, only conceding one shot. That's not bad. New who made some questionable decisions, but I think that's new who being new who. I don't think there's really much you can say about the defense, but outside of maybe Alex Roldan, who did have, he probably had the best chances of the game. They fell to him, unfortunately, but he just hesitated so much. Yeah, I mean, that's just, I don't know. Like, you saw it in preseason, just he's lacking that like just clinical ability he used to have I mean, back before his second acl tear he was great he was on a tear 2019 was best year ever goes to swansea on loan tears his acl and then after that he's just been mediocre at best i mean as, as far as mls strikers go he's maybe in like 50 percent but like it's just so not I, good enough even though i was talking about alex and you went back to jordan oh, which is no it's okay it's totally fine i could just tell you're just frustrated with him at i mean it's I think I've said it too. It's just very obvious. He's not, he's, Jordan's not necessarily a bad striker. He's just not a guy that you can consistently depend on to be your striker for an entirety of the season. That's just the truth and that's the reality now with him. So you have to utilize him in an area which I think might be on the wing, but now you have De La Vega and Chu who both arguably are better wingers than him. And you kind of just think, where does he fit in in this, in this team? Because as a striker, he's, Granted, his chances have been limited, but he's had chances. The game, the opening minutes against LAFC, he had a header opportunity in this match. Yes, you're not having a plethora of chances, but if you want to be an upper echelon's team and striker, you have to take any opportunities you get. And he was almost a ghost in this game. Yeah, um, I mean, it's just, it's just frustrating to watch, really. I mean, Pedro De La Vega, I think he's fantastic. He's look, he looked great when he came on for against LAFC. He looked good in the first 60 minutes, but I don't think he's a true number 10. He should be playing on that winger role. I think we should be playing three at the top, two on the left, uh, or De La Vega on the right, or switch him, invert the wingers so they can cut in and have a shot. Because um, it's clear that we, what we do as a team, drive down the line, cross the ball in, it doesn't work. We have to defend. We do it over and over and over. And it's, it's just... It's really annoying to watch. Um, I, I just, yeah, it's frustrating. Who would you blame for tonight's game? Or even, we can even chime, we can add to the opening game against LAFC, which weirdly I feel like is being swept under the rug as if today was our first game. I feel like it's not really talked about much. We've had two games. We don't have a single win. I don't necessarily think alarm bells need to be rung because I think we these are kind of a bit expected, but to not beat Austin FC at home, this was... I, on paper, 
This was the guaranteed three points. We haven't scored a goal from open play. We don't create many open play opportunities. I think from two games, we've had maybe like four. Who is to blame? Who would you point the fingers at if there's anyone to point fingers I, at? I mean, I don't think there's one specific person we can point the finger at. I think it's more of a, a Schmetzer not being willing to change his ways and tactics. I think it's a striking a striker problem, just clinical finishing. Our midfields look a little flat, but I mean, we're missing Joao Paulo, who's just a key part of this team. We saw that last year. He came back from injury. And was, I mean, the team just turned around. It looked so much better with him in it. There's a lot of in inexperience, I think, in the midfield. I think Obed's been very flat as well these two games, which concerning Josh, I think, has taken a bit more of a leadership role. But you can tell Josh needs a guy like a JP or a Rusnak next to him. But but to continue. Yeah, with your yeah I mean, Josh, I think, looked really good today. Um, I think he did well in that midfield. Obed, I think Obed needs someone experienced next to him because it's just like... He's not, he's still 17, 18 years old. He's not like, he can't just do it himself. He needs someone to help support him. And so I think from a midfield point of view, once we have Rusnak and Joao Paulo back, we might be better. Maybe move Rusnak to the 10, push De La Vega out to the wing, put Rui Diaz up top. I think that's our peak lineup. Um, yeah, that's just, yeah. Brian, you're someone that has kind of been done with him for a while. Do you still stand with that? Where is your stance with Brian at now? Um, look, I think it's just, it hasn't been working for a while. We got, we got good towards the end of the season, but it, it was like just the, the, how bad the Western Conference was last year. I mean, if you look at it, we were absolutely horrible last year. I'd say and overall, we were just a mid team. We were, we were second in the Western Conference and St. Louis City, for Christ's sakes, were first in the table. They were last based on expected goals. <laughs> like that is mind blowing how bad the West was last year. And for us to finish like second in a bad Western Conference, great. Okay, we're a mid table team in the Supporter Shield standings. This year, I think maybe we'll be in mid-table in the West. I think the West is a little bit better this year. Not by much, but it's a little bit better. Eastern Conference team's probably going to win the MLS Cup again. Probably win the Sporter Shield again, but yeah. Seattle Sounders nil, Austin FC nil. Noah, what was your thoughts on tonight's match? You know, I'm, I'm going to hear a lot of blame. I saw some other people coming in here talking about, oh my God, Jordan Morris, buddy, you you are worse than the two hamstrings that you have. You're worse <laughs> than the two ACLs that you don't have. I don't really think this is a Jordan Morris problem. Uh, you know, obviously we're lacking an attack still. It's been a problem that is stretched way too long. Yeah. Who's the nine? That's what I'm going to ask you. Who's the nine? Where, is it Morris? Is it Raul? Where is Waldo? Where is Waldo? Uh, but I think this team is boring. Okay. I think that we see that with Pedro de la Vega, the way he plays, the kind of confidence that he exudes he's having fun out there we used to have players like that we used to shit house we used to have fun you know you had you had people like clint Dempsey. you had people like oba up top being super creative but also just being kind of a piece of shit a little bit and i love that i think that that's you know that's that creativity that interestingness that and that's we why we were a supporter shield team that year exactly exactly so i think i think i don't think this team is bad i think that we have a lot of pieces but uh, I think that we're still missing something. What is that? That's your job. That's your job. job. You're the pundit. <laughs> you got to figure that out. But no, honestly, like, like, uh, uh, I think it's Craig's job. But <laughs> it is Craig's job. You know, I, I think also the Pedro de la Vega signing for for Craig was kind of like his. If he, if he didn't get that right, his ass is out. Right. I was like, your ass is out. But I think he got that right, so I will. I will give. Craig I think he even that. got. I think he even got the Nathan signing right too. I mean, what have we seen a couple minutes from him? Yeah. So I'll wait and I'll wait and see because A Bear started off amazing and uh, then turned into A Bear. Bro, you so. don't have to do us like. Bro, that. I listen. <laughs> hey, listen. Get ready to get ready to learn. What's what team did he go to? Uh, in China? China, some team in China. Okay, get ready to learn. You know, you know the meme. But uh, yeah, he's uh, yeah. So I'll wait. I'll wait on that. But honestly, like, what are we doing? Who are we? What's our identity as a yeah. club? I think that's where we're at. Do you think it's maybe the message is starting to get stale from Brian? Because we see with a lot of great coaches that sometimes the message gets stale. And do you think that might be the case here with him? No, I think it's just a transitionary period in the club. Like, 
you're obviously bringing in young players. You're obviously figuring out what your next move is. But, like, I don't think it's Brian's fault. I mean, I, how, how do you have 20 shots, and, and, you know, and what are the, I don't know how many were on goal. I but, think only three. Okay, three on goal, 20 shots. Yeah, that's not great finishing, but is that Brian's fault? Is the finishing part Brian's fault, or is that a nine? I don't know. I, I started this by saying Jordan Morris isn't the problem, but I really don't think he is. I mean, I, I'm looking at Nuhu as a bigger problem. Nuhu's, Nuhu should not be on this team anymore. Nuhu is one of the worst players on this entire team. I have said it in the past when knew who I mean there was he had a high va transfer value at yeah. some point we could have sold him for a lot of peas for a player that I don't think is as crucial as he is for the amount of money we could have gone from him I totally agree I think there is moments where we don't sell players at the right time where we know we can make good money maybe that could have even been recently with Liao Chu I mean we had a big offer come in from him for him granted yes we would have broken even but still I mean would we have made will we make any more I don't think so same thing with new who had a high high transfer value after the many Afghans especially oh, yeah. the one where he had a great performance against Egypt absolutely it's just I I just talking in Mosala though yeah. pocket in Mosala all of those so remember that yeah but like i don't know there is definitely a lot of concerns for this team we based off of the first two games mm -hmm. we don't beat lafc granted okay that's not a big deal but to not beat austin at home which on paper is the game you have to get three points in mm -hmm. it's a bit concerning and still haven't scored a goal from open play it is the classic Sounders match to lose, though, right? Like, lose it, like a coach that is reeling, a coach that literally should not have a job right now. It, you want to talk about stale. Look at Austin FC. Look at what no. they did in the first season and then absolutely did nothing. Stale. Stale. They're really stale. So, you know, if we're going to talk about that, Matt, the Wolf should be out. He's terrible. So... Uh, you know, absolutely, we should have won this game, but also this is a completely a Sounders game that they lose. Okay. They lose this game all the time. We, they, they, we love to be used as the club that just, you know, propels a shitty club back into some kind of form. form. We're, yeah. the we're the charity team. Exactly. We're the gift that keeps on giving. Literally. So for you, just to close it up, what... What do you think is the moment where, for you, the alarm bells start ringing? Where it's like, well, shit, maybe things are not going well. We're only two games in. It doesn't, in my opinion, it doesn't matter how you start. It's how you finish, especially with how things are formatted now in MLS. Where, at what point for you do you think the alarm bells should start ringing? Um, I don't know. I don't think I don't think it's right to make a decision right now. I think next season probably is when the alarm bells will go off for me. I think this is a transitionary period. I think it's gonna piss me off and I'm gonna be super annoyed. Let's make the playoffs. Shit, let's let's play, let's have fun in the open cup. Uh let's let's do all of those things and make it a season that's worth something, but I don't know. I don't know. When when our injury list is less and we are still losing, then I'll then I'll sound the okay, alarm bells. There you go. See give that? me give me give me Rusnak and give me JP back, and then I'll make that decision. Okay.